Hello everyone, and welcome back to Ace Attorney Investigations 2. Previously, we stumbled upon a mystifying scene. In the hidden 51st floor of the skyscraper, we found evidence. Evidence from old cases, stolen from police custody, to be auctioned off at an anonymous masked auction on the black market. It's absurd and bizarre and I can't figure out wh why. What's going on? <laughs> oh yeah, and also Lada Hart appeared. She had snuck in here the previous day to photograph and uh, get a scoop and now she's appeared. And now we need to, of course, get some information out of her because Lotta Heart is... She's just Lotta Heart, man. Well, let's begin. First, let's analyze my opponent's demeanor. I ain't telling you nothing, so quit wasting my time. She seems rather impatient, as if she's trying to cut off the conversation. I must be careful with my time. I won't have long to consider my responses. Oh! They put a timer in the timer? <laughs> I'm almost certain that she's hiding something from me. That's where I'll begin my attack. Now, time for the first move. Give me the information. I want you to tell me everything that you know, right now. No way, Jose. I ain't spilling my guts to someone I have no connection with. I don't have enough clues to proceed with this line of questioning. Okay, they told me to... Um, maybe match her pace, but maybe that's a bad idea. Maybe I should try another line of attack. Let's calm down and talk this over. Don't you think you're overreacting a bit? Let's just calm down. I'm always calm! Now leave me alone! <clears throat> you don't look calm to me. Haven't you realized it yet? I have you cornered. No. What are you yapping about? All you're doing is wasting my time. Uh, I usually try to think that if they're on the defensive, you go on the offensive. This is weird. Uh-oh. Why am I almost dead? I, I, I don't actually know what happens when you completely run out the clock. Maybe we'll find out. Miss Hart is getting increasingly impatient, as if she's trying to cut off the conversation. I must be careful with my time. I won't have long to consider my responses. Let's calm down. Alright, just calm down. Haven't you realized it yet? I have you... Well... I've had enough of your time wasting shenanigans. You best skedaddle now. Uh-oh. That's like half damage. Shoot, I messed up. Um... I can't give up now. I have to stand my ground. Oh, okay, that that's shockingly lenient. I have a lot of chances. So we're starting from the very beginning? Hmm. Wait and see, I guess. A real journalist always keeps her cool. Speaking of journalists, I have something interesting to tell you. A few days ago, I met another self-proclaimed journalist. She spoke with an accent quite similar to your own. She, she spoke like me? Then maybe it was... Yes, it was your student. Nicole Swift. She had a distinct way of speaking, one very much like your own. Furthermore, she said that she had a mentor. Could she have been referring to you? Uh, oh, so you know Nicole. Well, ain't that a fun little coincidence. Where'd y'all meet? Wait, no, no, stop trying to get me to spill the beans. 
Phew, that was a close call. It seems that she lets down her guard when she talks about Miss Swift. This could be a useful clue. I want you to tell me everything that you know right now. No way, Jose. I ain't spilling my guts to someone I have no connection with. Perhaps I should use that clue. I'm an acquaintance of your apprentice. You say I have no connection with you, Miss Hart. But don't we have a mutual acquaintance with your apprentice? Oh, uh, well, that's... I reckon it would be mighty cruel of me to give Nicole's friends a cold shoulder. Then why don't you share with us what you know? Well, when you put it like that, I guess I could let you in on my scoop. No, no, I ain't fallen for your nasty tricks. No sorry. Your scoop. Uh, no, just forget it. I think nothing important. Hmm. Do you have a scoop? Such a slip of the tongue. It's hardly becoming of a journalist. I, I mean, I would imagine she has a scooter, maybe. You have a scoop, don't you? Now, tell us what it is. Oh, uh, all right. You got me. I had me a perfect scoop. But I ain't telling you what it is. I'm going to sell the story to a publisher. The information she is hiding could be vital to the investigation. I need to make her talk. Next, I will press her on the contents of her scoop. She may be quick to lose her temper, but she's even quicker to loosen her tongue. She is not a difficult opponent. Now, to extract the information I need. Not difficult, you say. Here I go failing for the first time at logic chess. Ugh. Um, it's related to some sort of incident. Does your story pertain to an incident of some kind? Well, maybe it does, and maybe it doesn't. That's hardly a clear answer. Why are you always hollering at me? I ain't done nothing wrong. I just snuck in to do some investigative reporting. Hmm. You didn't do anything wrong. That's a bold statement. Considering you're currently trespassing on private property. Hey, you're doing it too. Well, I guess a prosecutor's got the right to investigate wherever they please. Well, he's not a prosecutor right now, but she doesn't need to know that. I probably shouldn't mention anything about the current state of my employment. There are far worse people in the world, you know? <laughs> I reckon I'm a saint, compared to folks who murder. Hmm. Ah. Considering what you just mumbled, is it possible your scoop has something to do with the murder incident? Uh, hey, I was only talking in general terms just now. I mean, anyone like a bag of roses looked like a bag of roses compared to a murderer, right? It sounds like you're just making excuses to me. All I did was gather info on the black market auction. Murder incident? I don't know anything about that. I ain't seen or heard nothing. I don't have enough clues to proceed with this line of questioning. Uh-oh. Maybe I should try another line of attack. Does this scoop of yours have something to do with the black market auction? What are you talking about? I, I don't know nothing about that. Weren't you in the middle of infiltrating the black market auction? The only logical conclusion is that your story has something to do with it. Y you ain't getting any answers from me. I, I didn't hear nothing. Hmm. You didn't hear what exactly? Do you hear something during the auction? Um, no, that's... I just heard a weird sound is all. It ain't even worth mentioning in my article. J just forget about it. 
There's no question. Something happened during the black market auction. She heard a strange sound. This could be a useful clue. Okay. Now we go back down the other line of questioning. Hopefully I can remember... Oh, you were trespassing. I can remember what I did here. Is it about a murder? Considering what you just mumbled, is it possible your scoop has something to do with a murder incident? Uh, hey, I was only talking in general terms just now. I mean, anyone looked like a bag of roses compared to a murderer, right? It sounds like you're just making excuses to me. All I did was gather info in the black market auction. A murder incident? I don't know anything about that. I ain't seen or heard nothing. Perhaps I should use that clue. Jeez, nearly ran out of time and nearly made one little mistake. We just barked out the wrong tree instead of getting the wrong, uh, wrong answer pick. Damn, this is brutal. Didn't you say you heard something strange during the auction? If it stuck out to you so much, it must not have been a sound that you would normally hear. For example, the screams of a murder victim? How do you keep figuring everything out so quick? Th that's right. I stumbled upon a murder in the middle of my stakeout. But please don't make me say any more. This is the biggest scoop I've had in a while. I wonder if the scream was K. Mm. After all, in the intro of this case, in the opening cutscene, K did scream in all caps. Could be what Lada heard. Hmm. The murder that she overheard. It's most likely the same incident we are currently investigating. This is bound to be crucial information. I'll finish this by confirming the credibility of her information. She has nowhere left to run. It's time to deal the final blow. Hmm. Did you really stumble upon a murder? You calling me a liar? Them's fine words. Hmm. Wait and see. I'm a bona fide journalist. I would never publish lies in my articles. Faster and more accurate than anyone, that's my motto. Her motto, huh? This could be a useful clue, should keep it in mind. Hmm. Tell me the truth, and though you're still hiding something from me. I ain't hiding nothing from nobody, I already done told you everything I know. I don't have enough clues to proceed with this line of questioning, okay? Maybe I should try another line of attack. Top pick, then. Tell me what you know about the murder incident, in full detail. Well, my memory ain't what it used to be. Not much I can talk about. I ain't the most attentive gal in the world, you see. Perhaps I should use that clue. I'd hardly expect a bona fide journalist to be so inattentive. Didn't you just say your motto is to be faster and more accurate than anyone? Ugh, well, that's... As I expected, the credibility of your information is suspect. But I know what I heard, even got proof. You have proof? You have proof. How is that possible? Explain yourself at once. I got me some evidence. Wait, you heard that? Oh, well, I was just talking to myself. Y'all just go on and pay it no mind. It seems she's still hiding something. This is an important clue. I need to use it effectively. Tell me the truth. I know you're still hiding something from me. I ain't hiding nothing from nobody. I've already done told you everything I know. 
Perhaps I should use that clue. Isn't there something you haven't told me yet? You have evidence regarding the incidents you witnessed. Something definitive enough to publish in an article. But <laughs> what in tarnation? Let me off the hook already. Fine, I'll tell you everything. Let me show you the photo I took if you stop harassing me. That good enough for you? Checkmate. Heal me. <laughs> That's the most pathetic heal. <laughs> well, now that I know that logic chess is so forgiving, I'm not scared that much of it. Huh. I lost. I really lost. The mouth of the south has been defeated. Oh, that's a new one. Now then, it's time to come clean. Tell me everything that you know. I was watching the auction, gathering info for my story. You didn't just watch, though. You got shocking photos, too, right? Uh, a little while after the auction started, someone won a bid. The conductor banged the gavel. Someone hollered, We'll finish the deal upstairs, or something like that. That ain't good, I thought to myself as I hurried back to hide behind the statue. D did you see whoever came up? Not quite, but I reckon the feller that came up was the winner of the bid. I could smell the buttery aroma of big, fat wads of cash. Buttery aroma? I can't imagine that at all. I reckon this room is where the bidders ponied up the dough for their purchases. The two of them talked for a while. Oh, wait, there was a second person in the storeroom. You betcha, I reckon it was the conductor. And then, out of nowhere, one of them started screaming. I almost scared my britches off. I rolled myself up into a ball and kept on laying low. So you witnessed the murder? Well, I wouldn't say that I witnessed it, but I definitely heard it, though. Didn't you try to stop them? Just stop right there. That ain't even funny. What's a dainty little thing like me gonna do? Dainty? <laughs> after that, oh. After that, I heard me some rustling and bustling. The whole time, I was really regretting coming here or something fierce. Well, yeah, that makes sense. I mean... But nothing gets in the way of Lotta Hart and her photos. This was my big scoop. Ain't no way I was gonna let it slip away. A bit later, I hear this loud thud. I figured it was my last chance to snap a photo from behind the statue. Well then, would you please show us the photo? Oh, why do I have to? Hmm. That's Red Coat Man. With a palm of red blood on the left hand? Hold, hold up. Hold up. Why... Why do Red Coat Person and the murder victim have the same bloody palm? Ooh. Interesting. Are they really the same people? Why would Jill Crane change into that hoodie, though? And then change back out? This is weird. Uh, this is... The person in the red raincoat who attacked Kay! The person in the red raincoat assaulted the victim in the storeroom. And then attacked Kay on the roof. Hm. There's only one person in this photo. Where's the victim? Yeah, I thought it was strange too. Could have sworn there were two of them, but... When I looked, there was only the one. But that's gotta be the killer, don't you reckon? So she's saying the victim disappeared. 
You were able to tell this person was the culprit just by looking. Their hand was stained bright red, so I figured it was them. What happened to the auction after the murder? Nothing really, just went on like normal. I guess those rich folks don't give a hoot. They got some nerve. The nerve of a journalist is nothing to scoff at either. Hmm. Well, logic time then? I mean, yeah. What else could it be? If we assume that the murder took place in this storeroom, then we must conclude that the body was here as well. Huh? Isn't that pretty obvious? Well, no, where's the blood stain? Do you remember how the participants left the auction? Of course, they passed through this storeroom on the way back from the auction. Oh! Exactly. The culprit had to hide the body so that the participants wouldn't discover it. The real question is, where was the body hidden? Well, there's a casket right there by their feet. Emma, would you mind lending me a hand? Leave it to me? What do you want me to do? Let's see. Use your luminal regent to test for a blood reaction. If you would, please. Okay. Let me show you the power of science. The glint in her eyes is getting brighter by the second. Let's start by examining that ladder over there. Based on Miss Hart's picture, the person in the red raincoat headed towards that ladder. Chances are, something will turn up if we check there. Just touch anything you want to examine. If you do that, you'll be able to spray the luminal region at it. There's a blood stain on the spot where you spray and you'll get a reaction like this. Even so, ugh, no matter how many times I see blood stains, they're always so gruesome. There's a blood reaction here, but it's kind of faint. Let's spray it with luminol two or three more times so it'll be nice and clear. You can see it clearly now. Ugh, it looks even more gruesome than before. Do you understand how to look for blood stains now? There are probably a few more bloodstains here, so why don't you give it a try, Mr. Edgeworth? Oh, looks like I actually have to touch. Yes. Hmm. Let's search the rest of the storeroom for bloodstains just like that. First, let's look for a place to spray the luminal regent. Hmm. Maybe on the safe, it was weirdly conspicuous, yet non-interactable. Oh, there were no reactions here. Okay. Well, how about the coffin? Oh, yeah. We didn't even see this before. Surely there's something new. Mr. Edgeworth! There's a bloodstain here, too! However, why is there a bloodstain in a place like this? Maybe something that had blood on it was stored inside. Mm-hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, there are places we still haven't checked yet. So let's continue our investigation. Yeah, le let's. There. How about the gaudy desk? Nope. Mm -mm. Uh, anything new with Ray? Hey, you can't spray luminol on people! Uh, yes, of course, I knew that. <laughs> okay. You want to examine this spot? Okay. 
Oh, how about the lift? Yo! Let's spray luminol in every suspicious looking nook and cranny. <laughs> Even she's saying it. How about the buttons? Not on the buttons. On the ground near it. Interesting. Mr. Retro, there's a reaction! It's a blood stain! But why in a place like this? So the body could be lowered down to the PIC room. Perhaps this was where the murder took place. Oh, looks like some of the blood dripped down to the floor below. Hmm. Looks like we found all the bloodstains in the storeroom. It seems we have investigated the storeroom sufficiently. Now to think a thunk. Oh yes, where was the body hidden? Maybe it was in the truck the trunk with the uh, blood in it. Hmm. Hmm, maybe. Wait, no. Maybe. I'm having second thought. Okay, whatever. <laughs> the reason why we found a blood stain in the costume trunk is because the murderer hid the body in that box. I wonder who won the bid for it. The trunk, I mean. That I don't know. In a certain way, everything worked out exactly as someone wanted. Hold it, hold it, it couldn't have been in that dressing box. What do you mean? When I first came down here, that box caught my eye too. It was just the right size and would have made the perfect hiding place. That's what I thought anyway. But I couldn't get the damn thing to open. It had been wrapped up real tight with a lock chain. The murder happened after that, so hiding a body in there would have been impossible, you know? A chain wrapped around it. That's a bit strange. Right now, it doesn't seem to be locked up at all. Huh? That's weird. Maybe my eyes were playing tricks on me or something. Huh. And with that, I believe we have examined everything there is to examine here. Well then, let's head on down! Oh, have we decided on our next destination? Hey, Kay! Uh, yes, Mr. Shields? We wouldn't want you to get lost, so make sure you stay real close to Uncle Ray, okay? Alright, I'll follow you closely, Mr. Shields. These two, since when do they get along like that? Investigation complete. Please. Please. I have a, I have a hope. Okay. It's right where, we, where I thought it would be, yes, but tell me everyone's just there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth. This place is... Is this the auction hall? No, it's the meeting room from before. <laughs> How nice of you to drop in, Kay Faraday. You've got some guts. Hey, you guys, arrest her! Arrest her! Oh, wait, Kay is... As for the rest of the riffraff, just show them out the door. <laughs> That's not gonna do anything, Lada. This is tyranny! Yeah, it's tyranny, pal. Miles, this is kinda bad. The light of justice shines above me. <laughs> Wait, what was Scruffy? This <laughs> was Scruffy Whip too. Now he's caught in the crossfire. <laughs> Why, me too. Oh, that's strange. 
I was aiming for that weak ex-prosecutor. You were clearly aiming at me. Maybe something got in my way, particularly... Yeah! Right around there. Franziska. Just what do you think you're doing here, ex-prosecutor Miles Edgeworth? I do not believe that Kay is the culprit behind this incident. You're just an ordinary man without investigation rights. What you say does not matter. I am Franziska von Karma. I will never stop moving forward. However, you chose to quit. The outcome of our battle has already been decided. I cast away my badge because it became a millstone around my neck. I shall continue moving forward even without it. The path I walk will surely lead to the truth. My actions are driven by that belief, and that is something which will never change. So, you're saying that you found a path to the truth? Then show it to me. But if that path... proves to be a foolish one, it will not survive my whip. Oh, here we go. Uh, Franny, why, why don't we begin by just going up the L, 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 no? Okay. The victim used her keycard and entered this room with the culprit. Then the culprit stabbed the victim in the chest with the candelabra, killing her. Well, you're missing a, a thing here. First I went up the elevator, then the stabbing happened. Yeah, honestly, if it was just a matter of grabbing the candelabra off the off the desk there, maybe it was just maybe it wasn't premeditated. Hmm. Shouldn't the letter make it obvious who the culprit is? Of course, the crime scene was right here in this room, the PIC meeting room. The proof is the bloodstain we found here in the meeting room. That settles it, Miles Edgeworth. Miss Von Karma seems really confident, doesn't she? Ah, uh, I see. She's a fiery one, isn't she? Oh, yeah. Uh, Raymond and Francisca haven't met yet, have they? I don't mind a feisty cutie. So how about an introductory... Ah! How repulsive. Well, Miles Edgeworth, can you break my logic? If you truly have no intention of stopping here, prove it to me with evidence. Very well. I'll show you, Franziska. The evidence that paves my path. Okay, I'm pretty sure I just need to show um, a certain evidence on one of the last statements, but let's press everything. The victim used her keycard and entered this room with the culprit. Was there nothing suspicious about the security system? The meeting room security is perfect, much like my logic. There is no room for doubt. Your logic isn't as perfect as you think. In any case, your opinion has not changed. Yes. The victim and the culprit entered the room together. Then the culprit stabbed the victim in the chest with a candelabra, killing her. Did the victim's wounds match up with the candelabra? The victim's chest was pierced in three places simultaneously by a sharp metal object. Is there anything else that could have done such a thing? That should all be written in Dr. Yun's autopsy report. So you're sure that the murder weapon was the candelabra? Exactly. As for who the culprit is... Shouldn't the letter make it obvious who the culprit is? Do you have anything to confirm that the letter was actually sent by Kay? Are you proposing that it was forged by the real criminal? That possibility was dismissed some time ago. There were no traces of forgery on the letter. 
Of course, there were no other traces besides Kay Faraday and the victim found on the letter. Are you saying you found Kay's fingerprints on the letter? The only fingerprints we found belonged to the victim. In other words, you can't really say that Kay is the culprit. Didn't I just say that the possibility of a forgery has been dismissed? That letter was originally sent by Kay Faraday. Therefore, it is only natural to assume that she is the culprit. Huh? Uh, whatever. Of course, the crime scene was right here in this room, the PIC meeting room. Do you have any proof that the crime took place in this room? Avon Karma is perfect in every way. Perhaps you forgot that when you gave up your badge? The proof is the bloodstain we found here in the meeting room. That settles it, Miles Edgeworth. That bloodstain dripped from... dripped from above. Have we determined who the blood actually belongs to? The blood analysis confirmed that it belonged to the victim. Just because the bloodstain was found here doesn't mean that this was the scene of the crime. You forget, Miles Edgeworth, that in court evidence is everything. If you believe this room is not the crime scene, show me the evidence that proves it. Evidence that shows where the crime took place. It may not be in court, but I'll show her the truth. Miss Von Karma isn't showing any openings. However, there is one fact we know that she does not. We're not the only ones who can perform scientific investigations. And therein lies the proof. The path to the truth I found. Yeah, it's a bloodstain. That line about science investigations gave it away. If memory serves me correctly, the blood in the meeting room was found in front of the statue of Lady Justice, was it not? To murder someone before Lady Justice, this culprit knows no fear. I wonder about that. Have a look at this piece of evidence. Blood was found in the storeroom right above the meeting room. As you can see, there are signs that it was dripped down onto the floor below. And right under the hidden lift is... The Statue of Lady Justice! Then you understand, the murder did not take place here. The killer murdered the victim in the storeroom and then moved the body to this room. What Lady Justice witnessed was a coward trying to conceal their crime. And not the moment of the murder. She's... Smiling. Pardon me, I just remembered a conversation quite similar to this one. As I expected, Miles Edgeworth, such naivete couldn't possibly be an act. Just how was Mr. Edgeworth naive? Youch! Have you forgotten, or are you just playing the foolish fool? The amount of blood in the meeting room is clearly greater than in the storeroom. Uh, uh, please don't just hit me and then ignore- ah! Such a large amount of blood couldn't- <laughs> Just ignore him again. <laughs> You'd think this whipping gag would be- would get old by now. But boy, it just doesn't. <laughs> Such a large amount of blood couldn't have simply dripped from the floor above. And even if it had, there should have been much more blood left behind in the storeroom. The murder could not have occurred anywhere other than this meeting room. <laughs> You're as predictable as always, Francisca. W what? The difference in the amount of blood is just as you say. The question is, why does such a difference exist? That issue is trivial. I've already explained it with my perfect logic. 
In that case, how do you explain the blood that was found in the storeroom? I don't suppose you're going to tell me that it somehow sprayed all the way up there. Like a water fountain? No way! Exactly. It's impossible. In other words, the reason for the difference in the amount of blood is... The amount of blood in the meeting room and the storeroom are different because... Oh yeah, that would do it! The weapon was pulled out here. Come to think of it, we did find the candelabra on the ground next to the body, didn't we? That's absolutely a thing. If if you get impaled, whatever you do, do not remove it. It is plugging the blood. Wait until you're in the hands of medics, you know? The victim died of a stab wound. Naturally, there would be a significant amount of blood loss. That's obvious, just from looking at the blood stain. But that's so weird. She was attacked in the storeroom, but there was less blood found there than... Gah! Silence, you third-rate prosecutor. But I'm the best. Yeah. Do you know when you lose the most blood after getting stabbed with a sharp object? Oh, I know, I know, it's when the sharp object is pulled out, right? Precisely. I, I don't think of the ends of a candelabra as being sharp, though. Like, ow. After being stabbed with the candelabra, the body was moved to the meeting room. And then the murder weapon was pulled out right here in this very room. That would account for the difference in the amount of blood that was left behind. But why would the culprits go through all that trouble? Most likely to give the impression that the murder occurred in the meeting room. It seems Miss Crane's keycard was used last night. But based on the time of use, it must have been a ploy by the culprit to mislead us. In all likelihood, it was the culprit who used the keycard to enter the meeting room. Why would the culprit have needed to do that? Perhaps they feared that the storeroom would be found out during the investigation. If they were involved in the auction, they would not have wanted it to become public. Okay, are you, are, are you gonna tell Francisca about the auction, or are we just assuming she knows everything now? This is weird. The auction, you say? Okay, yeah, there we go. Perhaps you should go upstairs and see for yourself what items are on display. I'm sure that will allow you to understand what occurred here. Impressive, Miles Edgeworth. You're willing to go that far to protect her? There's something big lurking behind the scenes of this case. Kay simply got caught up in it. You're exaggerating. Am I now? More than anyone, I would think you'd understand the significance behind all this. Why would you, a prosecutor working with Interpol, be involved in a domestic case? Wasn't your objective to crush a certain international smuggling ring? If your search for smuggled goods has led you here, then isn't this feeling I have related to the case? I'm relieved. You haven't lost your touch even though you've turned in your badge. I've heard about your situation from Scruffy over there. Uh, um, sorry sir, I just wanted to help out somehow. A wise decision, detective. Francisca, are you the one in charge of this case? Oh, come she was going to be riding that high of being praised for a long time. <laughs> Isn't Interpol pursuing the black market auction? And what if I am? That's not something you need to know. So you knew about all this from the very beginning. You knew the black market auction was being held right here. Hey, hey, mind if I butt in? Yes? About that gal who turned up dead. You! 
Hey, I ain't done talking yet. Yeah! Yang changed a lick. This case doesn't need even a fragment of your faulty testimony. What are you saying? I'm a bona fide jerk. Ow! Back then, you gave false testimony. Miss Von Karma seems to really dislike Lada. I can't say she's fond of her. Ain't that Crane Gal one of them PIC members? She's a spitting image of the conductor. I reckon she. Ouch! She hit me! She hit me again! What is the meaning of this? Answer me, Miles Edgeworth. From Miss Hart's testimony, we obtained a description of what the conductor was wearing. And it matches what the victim, Jill Crane, was wearing. You mean to say, the one who was murdered was the conductor? Miss Von Karma, maybe you should call me- yeah. it, would seem that, oh, it would seem that a new fact has just been brought to light. Indeed, I came here in pursuit of the black market auction. In order to arrest the organizer of the event, in other words, the conductor. If we believe Miss Hart's testimony, then the conductor is already dead. Wouldn't this mean that your investigation has ended in vain? That's right. However, I swear on my name that I will not return empty-handed. I challenge you, Miles Edgeworth. A challenge is fine, but... Why is she readying her whip like she's out for a victim of her own? Round two? I will concede your argument. The murder occurred in the storeroom, correct? That would mean the culprit is someone who participated in the auction. If that phot photographer is correct, the victim was the conductor, and the culprit was a customer. The culprit waited for the victim in the storeroom, where the goods were delivered. Then they stabbed the victim in the chest with the candelabra in the storeroom. That... Seems... Correct? That is all. I trust you have no objections. Unfortunately, that is not the case, because there is a hole in your testimony. Uh-oh. As expected of Mr. Edgeworth, I didn't notice anything at all. Okay, that makes me feel better. Well then, please settle this with one blow. Yes, of course. Watch as I crush her logic. Rebuttal. I will concede your argument. The murder occurred in the storeroom, correct? You were surprisingly quick to concede. I simply cannot deny facts that are backed by evidence. That is all. You have proven that the murder occurred in the storeroom. That would mean the culprit is someone who participated in the auction. The culprit participated in the auction. I'd like to hear your basis for this claim. When I spoke with the staff of this building, not a single one mentioned the storeroom. The storeroom's existence must have only been known to a select few. And that's where the items for the auction were being stored. I see you understand. Yes, the culprit participated in the auction. If that photographer is correct, the victim was the conductor, and the culprit was a customer. So you're saying that the victim was the auction's conductor? Right, and the culprit... Hey, ain't she the one who told her that was just a moment ago? Yes, that's right. However, I was simply making sure her logic is clear. That ain't right. You're doing it wrong. This is the part where you're supposed to say, I done goofed. The culprit was a customer participating in the black market auction. What in tarnation? You've done it. Don't cover for him. Of course, that is only if this photographer's testimony is indeed true. I can't tell whether they're on good or bad terms. 
The issue here is the culprit's actions. The culprit waited for the victim in the storeroom where the goods were delivered. Oh, no, the culprit rode up with the victim, I think. Miss Hart was in the storeroom at the time. Could the culprit really have been waiting there? I don't know where she was hiding, but since you've seen it, you must know as well. There are numerous hiding places in that storeroom. So the culprit was hiding while they waited for the victim to arrive. I believe the crime occurred after the auction ended. After all, the victim was the organizer of the auction, the conductor. During the auction, the organizer would have to be in front of the customers the entire time. After the auction ended. Please add that statement to your testimony. I believe the crime occurred after the auction ended. I think we have evidence to disprove that. Not his testimony. Yeah, the auction continued even after Jill Crane's murder. That's pretty cut and dry. Objection! As I thought, you are one step behind. What did you say? The victim was not the conductor, and I have proof. Miss Hart's testimony. That photographer's testimony is not trustworthy. What are y'all saying? I'm a bona fide journey. Ow! Cease your idle chatter. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was funny. Yeah. Francisca, calm down and listen. Miss Hart witnessed a part of the murder. The main point here is that after witnessing the murder, she says the auction continued. That's right, sure as can be, now just kept going on shamelessly. Do you think the auction could have continued without someone conducting it? If the victim was not the conductor, the person killed must have been a customer. No! As I said from the beginning, Kay is not the culprit. After all, she herself was attacked by someone and lost consciousness. In which case, that would also make her a victim. If the auction continued after the incident occurred... Yes, and the victim was not the conductor, but a customer. That's enough? Oh. Oh boy. Here, here we go. That voice... Oh boy, I can't wait to wait. I can't wait to do the same girly voice for this fifth girl. Oh, jeez. You know, at one point, I actually genuinely considered doing like um, voice training because boy, I, I really can only just do like one girl voice, can't I? <laughs> oh man. Oh well. Order in the court. The chairman will now enter. Oh, I didn't expect him to come back so soon. My, my, no need to be so stiff. Actually, feel free to call me Blazy. Well then, Blazy, what brings you here? Ah, uh, well, well, I just wanted to see if my idiot son was working hard, is all. Is this kind of father-son relationship really healthy? No. I had come to light a fire under you, but it seems I found an unexpected bonus. To think that the criminal who had become the talk of the town would be here of all places. Everyone, restrain the suspect at once. Please, wait. K. Faraday is not the go- Silence! That is quite troubling, Edgeworth. Didn't I tell you earlier? The PIC desires a swift resolution to this case. If it's not, we could lose our trust with the public. They'd call us the Waste of Time Committee. 
you know, it's troubling for me as well, that sort of thing, and at my age, too. <laughs> and on top of that, an illegal investigation is not something that I can overlook. Have you forgotten? You are no longer a prosecutor. You have lost all your authority. Furthermore, you have aided a criminal in evading the law. Yes, yes, that's right. You're so reliable, Courtney. I'm aware of the consequences of my actions. You may punish me as you wish. However, we have found a new suspect. It's the person pictured here. Kay Faraday was attacked by this person and... There is no need for your explanation. Just recently, a red raincoat was discovered in the vicinity of this building. The victim's blood and cherry blossom petals were found on the hood. Oh, Sakura petals. Now that you mention it on the viewing platform. Yes, they probably stuck on due to the blood. They were littered around the blood stain. And we've recently the... We've received the forensic report on the blood, you know. There is no doubt about it. The person in that photo is the victim, Jill Crane. W what did you say? Uh-oh. 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 Impossible. That would completely destroy the foundations of our logic. We had believed the person in the red raincoat was the culprit. Now it turns out that person is actually the murder victim. Wait, if that's the case, then the prime suspect would be... Miss Faraday, you met a person on the red raincoat on the rooftop, did you not? Yes, I did, but... The person in the red raincoat was the murder victim. And Kay Faraday came into contact with that person. Since one of the parties is now dead, what happened next should be clear. Objection! Kay was attacked by that person. As the victim, it would be impossible for her to be the culprit. There is no evidence she was attacked, is there? Furthermore, we must consider the possibility that the victim fought back. It's far too early to come to that conclusion. Kay is not the criminal. You're wrong. Uh, gay? That's wrong, even though I don't want to believe it myself. After hearing about the raincoat, I finally remembered. I only remembered a little, but from what I saw that night. The culprit is me. I remember looking down at the person in the red raincoat. Mr. Edgeworth, it was me! The culprit was me all along! Huh? That can't be right. Then... Why? Why do I have that memory? That person collapsed before my eyes. Engulfed in a pool of blood. Why didn't I do anything? It must have been because I killed her. It is clear to me the validity of Kay Faraday's memory. Didn't you doubt it until just now, pal? Congratulations, Miss Faraday. Your courage will surely allow you to be forgiven. Now, let us rejoice in the blessings of the Goddess of Law. <laughs> I kind of want to call it right here, but I feel like this scene's about to change, so... Objection! Allow me to give my opinion as an international prosecutor. Her actions as a criminal are... Hurry, arrest Kay Faraday at once! How dare you behave that way before me! You're being too forceful. Further verification is necessary. I'd even go so far as to say this is unlawful. 
Unfortunately, the law does not side with you. It sides with me, you see. But, you know, the beautiful bond between you two has been etched deeply into my heart. That reminds me. We seem to have forgotten one additional suspect. Edgeworth, that's you. What's that, pal? Mr. Edgeworth hasn't done anything wrong. I... That's not a girl. I beg to differ. That's right, you see. He's no longer a prosecutor, sadly enough. Your actions have gone too far this time. An illegal investigation and assisting in the escape of a criminal. I cannot even think of you as a former prosecutor. Now, humbly accept your punishment. Oh yes, that's right. I believe the plan for today was to hold your hearing before the PIC. Why don't we leave the hearing for tomorrow, even though the result is already crystal clear? You should think long and hard about what you've done. Very long and very hard. Court is now adjourned. <laughs> well, I'm glad I followed my instincts. Hey. <laughs> okay. This is a pretty bad end. I think both Kay and Miles are going to go to prison. Um... Oh my. Uh, I'm not sure what will happen next. Uh, I don't I don't see how they can weasel their way out of this, so maybe they'll have to rely on help from someone else. Maybe we'll control Raymond Shields. Maybe. But also, I want to say... The coat was found in the vicinity of the building. You know what? I want to say that's how Penny Nichols and that ladybug kid get roped into this. I want to say the raincoat was maybe found on the ground outside, like in some side alley. Maybe they found it while they were filming or... Hmm... Or, who knows, maybe Penny and Ladybug Kid are um, just going to show up in the fifth case. I don't know. I don't know. Um, by all I know, is this, th this case has a lot of characters. However, despite that there's really only like a handful of possible suspects, I... Mm. Okay, look, Justine Courtney is slime, but I don't think she's the killer. Um, she, could be, she, she could be an accomplice, though. Uh, I think maybe either Courtney did it or um, Blaze did it. Um... So... Kay looking down and seeing her own face. That's... Uh, um. I don't have anything to say to that, but... It's like... I mean... I... I... Mm. There's something weird going on. The position of the moon and how she saw the body. It's almost like she was looking at some sort of reflection, like a mirror and not... Mm. It's weird. Well, I think I've run out of things to say, so... Man, I, I just want to... Well, this, this case is good. This game is good. This is a, This is a really good game. Like, man, oh, wow. 
I think I even like it more than the previous one. And that's saying something, because the previous one was capital G great. This one, though, oh, man. Boy, howdy. Yeah, okay. I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been more Ace Attorney Investigations 2. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you next time. So until then, please take care.